All right, we're back. We're on page five of Calc AB notes five, and we're talking about the mean value theorem. So what does the mean value theorem say? It says a function is continuous on a closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. Then there exists a C such that F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A or B minus A for some C between A and B. But really it's saying that the slope of the tangent line somewhere between A and B um, is equal to the slope of the secant line between A and B. So uh, let's see if we can do these problems. So these are like really straightforward, like old school textbook problems. Uh, so we wanna determine if the MVT applies. If it applies, state the MVT in the context of the problem. So that's gonna be fun to write over and over. Um, and then uh, find the value that it guarantees. So, uh, all right, there we go. So this first one is a polynomial. Polynomials are continuous and differentiable. Every, well, they're differentiable everywhere and therefore continuous everywhere. So I'm actually gonna say, uh, all right, so I'm gonna say f of x is differentiable on the closed interval two, five. It doesn't need to be, right? So maybe I shouldn't write it this way. Maybe I should write, all right, I'll, I'll do it the standard way. I was gonna like skip a step. Well, not skip, but like, since it's differentiable, it's definitely continuous. But like when you're doing it the first time, maybe don't do that, you know? So is continuous on uh, two, five and differentiable. So we're not asked to like prove it. We're just stating that it's true on the open interval. Uh, so therefore by MVT, F prime of C equals, so it's gonna be F of five minus F of two over five minus two, which equals, so what does that equal? Um, you know, I'm just going to say for some C and then I'll work that out for some C. And do we have enough room? Hard to say. C that's an element of the open interval from two to five. Okay. So F prime. So let me, on the side here, let me just work out F of five. F of five is 25, 75 minus 25 is 50, 51. Yikes. And then f of two is 12 minus 10 is two, so three, f of two is three. So we get, okay, so it's really not that bad. I mean, maybe it's not that great, but uh, so f prime of x, I should have, maybe I should have done that in a different color, whatever. Uh, f prime of x is six x. I'm just riddled with doubts today, right? False starts, whatever. Uh, here we go. So usually, so what I always do is I always solve for X and then I say, therefore C equals, um, and I'm going to do that here too. So six X minus five. I forgot the X. Cool. Killing it. Six X minus five equals 51 minus three over, uh, five minus two. So 48 over three. So 16. So six x equals 20, oh gross, six x equals 21, x equals 21 over six, which is seven halves, oh, seven halves. All right, so c equals seven halves is the value guaranteed. This page is gonna take an hour. Not really, well maybe by MVT. Should I check it? I guess so. Uh, all right, let's, let's do that. So I'm gonna switch over to a calculator page and uh, let's do, so don't, don't worry about what's on the screen there. Let's do uh, F of X is, so once we set this up, we'll be able to like use it over and over and that's probably good. Plus one, I want to solve the derivative with respect to x of f of x equals, and then you can just type in f of five minus f of two over five minus two, and we need to solve for x. We get seven halves. It's in the interval from two to five, so that is our value, and we wrote it down. So good job, us. Let's take a look at take a look at the next one, and here we go. All right, so where does this function have problems? It has a problem at x equals four, but four is not in the interval. 
So the function, uh, I'm going to like start writing it up here so that I have more room. Uh, f of x is continuous at x equals 4. No, at x equals 4. Jeez, man. On the close interval from 1 to 3 continues at 4. Like, it's, it's not even. Um, and differentiable on the open interval from 1 to 3. Because the only problem is um, at x equals 4. So everywhere else is, is going to be nice and smooth. So therefore, by MVT, this is taking a long time to write. And that's what happens in calculus. So like, you know how to do everything. It's like you got to get really good at writing everything. That's where, that's like your choke point, basically. By MVT, f prime of c equals f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1 for some c. Because uh, I don't, you don't do a lot of these problems. Like these problems are great. They hammer home like what the MVT is, how you deal with it. Um, you do them, when we get to the next couple pages, you'll see how you actually end up using it more often. These are like very mechanical um, type problems. There, okay. So what do we gotta do? I gotta find F prime, which I'm gonna do somewhere. I'm gonna use a little trick on this before I find F prime though. I'm gonna say, sorry, probably making somebody sick. I'll do it up here. I'm gonna rewrite F of X as, watch this, X minus four plus four plus three over x minus four. So I call this the plus one minus one trick. It's to avoid doing division. Also, I could have just used the quotient rule, would have been totally fine. But I'm rewriting f of x because now I can group uh, these together and break this into two fractions. And I'll get x minus four over x minus four plus one plus seven over uh, y parentheses. Well, I mean, it's not wrong, but x minus four. Okay, why would I do this? I'm gonna do this because the derivative of that is easier to find. I could use a quotient rule. I'm gonna use the chain rule and just know that f prime of x is negative seven over x minus four squared, right? So in my mind, I thought seven, the quantity x minus four to the negative first, bring the exponent down, negative seven, x minus four to the negative second, but then rewrite it as a fraction so that it looks all nice. So we get that. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna do it in this color. So negative seven over x minus four squared equals uh, f of three is six over negative one, so negative six. f of one is four over negative three, so that's delightful. Uh, so minus, ne so minus negative, uh, you ever have a bad day? I feel like that may be happening here. Which, like, I mean, it's Friday afternoon right now for me. Like, I could call it a day, but I feel like, you know, I have this schedule that I want to kind of keep to. So I'm going to keep going, but I think we can all see that this isn't going great. Uh, all right. So that's plus. Oh, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resort to a calculator on a lot of these, I think. Uh, so we're going to have equals. It's definitely over two. Well, I'm going to make it over six. All right. Negative 18 plus four, negative 14 over six. Fine. Uh, cross multiply, I guess, x minus four squared. So if I bring the seven over, I get two over six, which is one third, and then flip it over, I think I get three. Does that make sense? I don't know. If I plug in three, uh, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm not plugging anything in yet. This is unfathomable to me how poorly I'm doing on this, but let's keep going. And now we're just changing things into, uh, can I erase you? Yeah, don't change that. All right, so x is four plus or minus square root of three. Okay, but our interval is from one to three. So four plus something can't be in the interval. So I'm gonna say therefore, c equals four minus radical three is value guaranteed. Barely make it by MVT. 
All right. Part of the problem here is there's just not enough room. I don't know. I mean, students have been yelling that at me for years. I'm really feeling it now. Um, I can do a little, little of the old iPad magic here, make it look like my work was better, which I'm going to. Move this over here. And maybe I'll move this up so that it's not in the way of the next problem. I really, really thread the ribbon on the edge there. Should we check this on a calculator? Probably. Let's do it. So we'll go over here to the calculator. It's kind of set up. So like I can just change f of x and then I have to change like f of b and f of a. But um, so f of x is x plus three over x minus four. And then if I go up here, so I need to change this to three, this to one, this to three, this to one. You could actually make it even more efficient. So uh, you can, we got the right answer. Um, you can make it more efficient by like, you can create, so like I could do like MVT of AB set equal to, this is weird. Like, I don't, I don't think there's a reason to do this, but uh, now that I've done it, I'm probably going to use it. So this would be MVT of one, three, and then, uh, do this and it just solves press control enter if you want the decimals, but we don't want a decimal on this. I don't think, cause we're doing it by hand, but maybe. Maybe on the next one, I'm gonna do one more in this video and then uh, stop and I'll come back and I'll do, cause that'll be like three and three, hopefully. Uh, come back and do the other ones in the next video. Uh, maybe I'll just do this one on the calculator. I doubt it though. All right, we gotta make our statement. So I'm gonna try it far over as I can. Uh, and I'm gonna try to use a pen instead of the uh, selection tool. F of X is continuous on the closed interval. This is like, it's mind numbing when you're doing a lot of questions in a row to write the correct justification over and over. We're trying to build that memory up though. Like you see it, you do it. Um, continuous here, differentiable on the open, therefore by MVT. Some of, it must not apply to some of them, right? That'll like speed us up. By MVT, uh, I'm gonna put it over here. F prime of C equals f of two minus f of zero over two minus zero for some c. This I would argue is like actually the most important part is where you're like writing it out and thinking about what you're doing and hopefully doing it right. Okay, so that it was guaranteed. That's all the mean value theorem tells you. It doesn't tell you how to find it. It doesn't tell you any of this other stuff. We're just like going that extra mile because that's who we are. Um, so I'm gonna switch colors here and say the derivative is uh, negative one over x minus four squared. So I'm thinking of that as um, x minus four to the negative first. So bring the exponent down, subtract one. So we get negative quantity x minus four to the negative two, rewrite it as a fraction, equals, uh, all right, f of two is negative one half minus f of zero is negative one fourth, and then over two minus zero is two. So this will give us negative one over the quantity x minus four squared, negative one half plus one fourth, negative two fourths plus one fourth is negative one fourth over two is negative one eighth. All right, so what does that give us? That gives us, I'm gonna start over here, x minus four squared is equal to eight, which means that x is four plus or minus radical eight. Now look at your interval. Uh, four plus something could not be in the interval, so it must be four minus radical eight. So I'm gonna say therefore, C equals four minus radical eight. Is the value guaranteed by the mean value theorem, but like, uh, how many times do you wanna write that? Uh, you should write it, you know, it's the right thing to do, but uh, you know, can't win them all. All right, I'm gonna try to use this new thing that I've defined here. So f of x, I just need to tell it the function, which is one over x minus four. And then uh, it's in the var key now, and do var mvt. So you have to redefine the function before you do this. Otherwise it's gonna be stuck with a previous function. But if I do zero to two, so I get uh, two root two is root eight. So we get this. Decimals, uh, the only one that's in the interval is four minus two root two or four minus root eight. So we got it right. So I'm gonna go back to the notes so that you could screenshot anything that you need to. And then I'm gonna call it quits on this video. 
come back another one where hopefully it's going to go better. We'll see. And I mean, this didn't go poorly. We got everything right. Just had a really, it's really like off to a rough start on the first one. Had to cram in my work on the second one. Nothing good. I hope you're taking screenshots right now. And then this one, I think this one went pretty smoothly. Uh, we use calculator. We define the function. All good things. Uh, I will see you in the next video when we're going to, you know, try to knock out this page. So see you then.